See, what y'all don't know, or y'all must have forgot, like Roy Jones, is I got videos with major heavy hitters, you heard? Tony Yayo. You heard? Conway. Conway, I'm sorry. West Side Gun, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear nothing else about it. You heard? Watch my video with Jada Kiss. Swag on Pluto. Fire. MTV action was on that. You heard? Watch my video with Jim Jones. MTV action was on that. Y'all got to do the history on the kid LAZ. You heard? If you need them rap collabs, get at me, bro. I got you for the low. You heard? Yo, and make sure y'all go to genpop.store and get that merch. You heard? That's genpop.store. We got a little bit of everything. And for y'all dudes out there, that's my size, but be wanting a 5 and 6X, bro, this ain't a cash money records video shoot. You heard it's 2022. You heard? Slim that up, bro. So the nigga, we running down the block, and the nigga saying, I did this for you, Corey. I did this for you. I did this for you. So I'm saying to myself, he might have killed that nigga, but they started it, though. They started it, so two weeks went by. I always wondered since that song came out when you said me in front of Big Lou's fighting in the street with that little slow motion scene of, of the dude backing up and, and it was just looking crazy. Wow, whoever filmed that scene, they killed that scene, but it always made me wonder, did that fight really take place? The fight really took place, man. And it was really wild because that was a busy street. And for us to be fighting that long in the middle of the street was like, how, how is this going on when this is like a normal bus schedule? It's like the block is active and everything at that moment just stopped for this one fight. You know what I mean? For this one fight. But it all started with, you know, I knew this girl from the town and the girl was my age. God bless. She passed away, God bless. But um, the girl was my age and we had two little cousins. So our two little cousins, they wasn't too far, maybe one or two years off, but he was my first cousin. So he was messing with her little cousin. So they lived in Mount Vernon over in the Heights, which I would later on live in that neighborhood. Um, but I'm coming from Queens and my little cousin is coming from New Rochelle, which is not a good look if you from over there and you go over there to Mount Vernon and don't know nobody really good. So, you know, me and my cousin, we tight, you know, we gonna go over there. So I'm a chaperone, she gonna chaperone. So, you know, we having a good time. You know, she got a, then something happened where some dudes were outside, you know, with maybe four trucks, chains and bats and all of that. And, you know, I'm wondering what's going on. Cause we did this a couple of times. We done, you know, got together, they got together. You know, we ain't doing nothing. I'm not interested in the girl. She not interested in me, but we cool. So, our little cousins is doing their thing and we just chaperoning, keeping each other company or whatever, because I'm going back with my cousin. When he leave, he gonna leave with me. So these guys come out and they, you know, talking they shit. They're much older than us, but I'm seasoned in drama because I'm coming from Queens. So I'm seasoned in a way where I'm not panicking. I'm just saying, what's the problem? Because if I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. So what's the problem? We over here. So they telling me, so, you know, Troy pop out and say his little piece. And I'm telling them, you know, he go over there to his girl and they talking, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they arguing. So I'm asking the, the dude, you know, or whatever, could be his brother, couldn't be older nigga, you know, what, you know, what the problem is, you know, um, my little cousin's over here and he's dealing with her little cousin and we chaperoning. I don't want nothing to happen to my cousin. So I'm here. There's nothing going on. So they took it for face value. I'm thinking it's dead. So we move on. Maybe six months down the line, eight months down the line. You know, having them 
is bubbling they up you know i'm trying to finish high up high school get myself together i'm i'm really not at that peak of the music yet but i'm i'm really starting to get into it as far as the writing and taking it seriously and not being out in the street really too much to to agitate that you know what i mean because having them inspired me so i'm coming off the bus from night school like you know what i mean um so i got my backpack on coming off the bus everybody's on the block so we in front of big lose you know so i'm you know i'm good it's good to be home so i'm not gonna go straight home so i'm gonna keep my backpack on or so i'm you know mingling or whatever going in and out of the store you know buying what i want to buy or whatever whatever and i noticed these two these three um these three lincolns pull up and he's in the in this chevy van black you know all black joints niggas hop out looking brand new jordan shit on you know looking real crispy so they pull up on my they don't even come to me they line up in front of me and then two other dudes go to my peoples and talk to them about me so i'm watching all this but i'm acting like i don't see it so I'm watching, but they watching me. So once they put their eyes on me and I'm and, and I see they looking at me, but and I'm looking away and then I look back and they still looking at me, I don't take my eyes off them. So I see one of them is carrying a, a, a 40 bottle. The other one got like a ring with these spikes on it, all types of shit. Like I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So I'm like, what is this about? So boom. My man comes over to me and say, yo, Troy want a fair one. So I'm saying to myself, out of nowhere, this nigga want a fair one? Okay. So the minute he said they want a fair one and I said, okay, that's the last thing I remember because these niggas jumped all over me, fucking me up, right? So now my man's in them is pulling these niggas off of me, pulling these niggas off of me. But, but yanking these niggas off of me So I'm out of it I'm fucked up Niggas bust my shit Fuck me up Right I'm bleeding I can taste it I can taste the blood in my mouth So one I could, I, one time I, I looked at my mouth But I didn't look at it But I could put my tongue through my lip And I knew they fucked me up Because they hit me hard so my man's is like trying to get my backpack off because somehow they 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 was pounding me so hard my backpack stayed on my back like so my books was blocking it the, my books was blocking the back shit to my back so i'm all days he's like yo taking the backpack off listen so they yell my other man is yelling at them i thought y'all wanted the fair one so my man is like yo snap out of that shit and do what you do to this nigga. Give it to this nigga. So I get out in the street. There ain't nothing happening. It's like a circle of quietness, like a circle. So I'm I'm still fucked up, kind of. I'm like fucked up, but I'm like mad. So I'm not really fucked up no more. So I'm mad. I said, okay, I want to play that game. So he's thinking it's sweet. I see it. So he's doing his shit. I'm doing my shit. And after a while, I'm seeing his plays. So I'm countering his plays. He's not, he don't got no plays no more. So now I'm starting to get at him. And I'm just waiting. I'm not waiting for him to, to, to like tussle with me. I don't want to tussle. I just want to get to where I can just knock him down. And once I knock him down, then I'm going to kick him and stomp him. But I want to knock him down first. So he's not when i'm getting these punches in he's not blocking them because he don't know where they're coming from because he's not used to being out here fighting with these niggas so he's his tank is running out so he decides because i'm light, like maybe back then maybe a good 180. so back then he thinks he could pick me up usually when a nigga can't scrap with you no more he gonna try to pick you up and slam you so he tried to pick me up and slam me, but he, I was ready for when he shot that shit. When he shot that shit, 
I pushed it back and landed on his shoulders. My knees was on his shoulders and all I had was his head. When I landed, when he landed back on me, because when he shot, he didn't know, he didn't think, he did, he thought that he could pick me up and slam me. But when he picked me up, I pushed him over on his back. So he's dead meat now. The fight is over. I'm saying, and I'm not even, it's not even like I'm rushing shit. I'm not rushing nothing. So I'm, I got him. His brother punches me in the back of the head crazy if i didn't have a concussion when them niggas fucked me up before now i got a concussion now i got a concussion that shit gave me a headache so niggas stop the fight yo you can't be doing that when your man is getting fucked up now you want to stop the fight and do it over the next time you do that my man told him the next time you do that then it's gonna be a problem so let let it happen so niggas lined it up again i'm like yo but i got a fucking headache glass i got a fucking migraine yo so 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 we do it again so now i'm angry again like i'm i gotta do it all over again so i'm angry i'm saying yo i'm not even i'm not even gonna like like i'm just gonna rush hit this nigga and just punch this nigga fuck his fuck lining up with this nigga and see what he going through. I'ma just bull rush his shit. So when he when we line up, I just bull rush him with punches and, and, and combinations and fucking the nigga up and, and had a nigga chasing me and, and just running into shit. So his brother punches me in the back of the head again. So my man said, yo, didn't I tell you you ain't supposed to do that shit when your man is getting fucked up? Now you want to get in it and punch the nigga. When he punched the nigga's brother, the nigga didn't just fall like you just crumpled. The nigga fell back like when you died, when you lay back into a pool. The nigga laid, fell straight, straight, body stayed straight and fell straight back onto the concrete. And his head bust wide open. Blood start going everywhere. And then that nigga start shaking. You know what we gonna do next. So, so I'm watching that. I'm watching that. And for a minute, I'm saying, the nigga punched me in the back of my head though. So I'm after him still some more. And niggas is like looking, they frozen. But I'm after him, he's saying, yo, my brother, my brother. And I'm saying to myself, I don't give a fuck. You put me through hell tonight. But niggas was like, yo, let's go. And we ran. So the nigga, we running down the block. And the nigga saying, I did this for you, Corey. I did this for you. I did this for you. So I'm saying to myself, he might have killed that nigga, but they started it though. They started it. So two weeks went by. Everybody's up at the hospital. I heard the niggas in a coma. He's fucked up. He's fucked up. But no cops is coming to my house. Nothing. They kept it a hundred. Right? So I don't know why they didn't come to my house. I didn't know. So one day, I'm saying, you know, I'm an anti nigga. It's two weeks already. I'm coming outside. So I go outside. I go up the block like a dumb nigga. I go up the fucking block. I don't know why, but I just couldn't take it. I just So I'm walking on the block. I just got there. A truck pulled right up on me. I'm like, oh shit. What's this now? I'm by myself. Nothing. I don't got nothing. I'm just walking from the projects. I remember walking from the projects up towards Big Lou's and the truck pull up on me. The window, the tents is on the truck. The window come down. It's fucking Hev. So Hev, Hev is like, get in the car. So I hesitate. Automatically, I hesitate because I know that's the other side. That's the some other shit. I don't trust nothing. 
Did you, you know Hev at the time? You knew you knew son. I knew him well. Like we was we was buddies. Like he, like we was like on some different time. Like and how old was, how old was you at this time? Like around. I had to be like I had to be every bit of nineteen twenty. No more than because I had to make up classes of gym. I had like three gyms, so I would always go in my gym clothes and my backpack. And I had to write down different stuff from gym. I didn't even know you had to write shit in gym. I just never went because you had to change clothes and I wanted to keep my clothes right. So I'm making up all these classes to get a nag a real diploma instead of a GED. Mm. So I'm every bit of 19, no more than t- turning into 20 or something. Because I remember this like, like it's like yesterday. So that I get in the car, I get in the car. Right, cause the nigga look at me hesitating, and niggas say the nigga got offended. Like, really? You think I'm on it like that? So the nigga got mad. Get the fuck in the car, man. So I got in the car. I mean, in the truck. I get in there. We turn the corner on Seventh Avenue, and by the projects, I look in the back seat. It's Troy in the back seat. The niggas in the back seat. So I look at him and say, Why you keep looking at me like that? Why you keep looking at me like that? It's like, yo, man. He said, Yo, that shit. I got the nigga here for a reason because I'm mad at this nigga. I'm disgusted with this nigga. What, what he did. He should have never approached you with nothing. He should have never came up here to do shit to you. So he was chopping it up all night chopping it up we end up at the studio we chopping it up chopping it up and that's how everything got sweet it just got tight i never got tight with his brother but me and him got tight but his brother his brother fully pulled through and and, and, and was back to his normal self yeah from what i understand yes thank god yes god is good so he he pulled through um, but I, I never had a conversation with him, to my knowledge. I never really had sat down with him. I never really studied him. He was, he, I never really met him and had a, a, a conversation or hello or nothing. How long was it after y'all squashed that beef? How many years later did, you know, son pass away, T-Roy? He passed away not too long after that, maybe a couple of years after that. You know what I'm saying? He passed away, you know, but I'm glad we got tight because I was really passionate about, you know, what he did. I always felt it was, it, he didn't have to do me like that, you know, and they really hurt me, you know? So it wasn't like it was no play thing. And, and you know, we already talked about it, but he had had it in his heart and had it in his mind and niggas done pressed him probably so hard that he just put it in his mind that I was doing something with this girl and I really wasn't doing nothing with the girl she was really my friend and we was really getting a kick off of our little cousins clicking up but we never thought about clicking up we was just on the same vibe of vibing like you know little young teenagers vibing and he turned it into some other shit that I didn't think he should have turned it into but in any event that whole platform took me to where I needed to be in the town to get to that point you know what I'm saying to get to that to to get to that level where you know you could take wins and losses and there was wins and there was losses but all those wins and losses were lessons to get where I was in the town to be great it, was just, it wasn't just being good in the town I was great in the town Because I made my mark And I made my name beyond anything That could ever push it another way You know what I mean Because I always had my own mind Just like growing out of them YGs I, I had my own mind I knew I was bigger than that I knew I needed my own set I knew I needed my own thing to grow Because I, I felt different And I was raised different And I was from a different pedigree and that's why I'm here today on that same level, on that same vibe. Mm. So when you said earlier that it's only a few big families in Mount Vernon, 
was Heavy D his, was his family one of those families? His family was his family was one of those families because his brothers were known, and he came from a block. See, see, in Mount Vernon, on their block, on Hev and Pete Rock's block, I had an aunt that lived on that block. My grandmother's sister had a house on that block. My aunt Mary Jane. So I would always be on that block without knowing them. I didn't know them up until I got in the town and start getting acclimated. And I maybe met Heavy D the first time, maybe at maybe 17, 16 years old, because I had a girlfriend that lived across the street from somebody that he used to hang out with. So that's how I met him. And y'all was like the same age or he was older than you a little bit? He was like slightly older, maybe like a year older. He's maybe no more than a year older than me, but he was more mature than the average. But even he been through some shit. You know what I'm saying? Even he came from something. They didn't really think in his family that he would be heavy D. They thought he would be something else. You know, right. or nothing. Little fat Jamaican kid. Like, how does you, how does he go? Who would think that that would be heavy D? That's what made it so crazy and so ill is that in that time span, he wasn't like, like I, I grew up with the love with the real uncles, like with the, he had a lot of brothers, older brothers, but he was the youngest. They didn't really look at him as the breadwinner, as the top dog, as the life changer. That's what made it so beautiful being around him as this, you saw the growth process. They saw it, even dudes that was with me like Pete Rock saw it way before I saw it. Like when he was driving and lost the eye. When he used to smoke cigarettes, dropped his cigarette and lost his eye. Driving. We got into an accident because of the cigarette? He got into an accident. He got into an accident. He, yeah, young nigga. Damn, I ain't even know that. And a lot of niggas don't know. Hev could fight. Hev, Hev's hands is nice. He got nice hands. He's not a he's not a pushover. Yeah, nah, I heard the opposite, man. Like I heard some was like the mayor of Mount Vernon. Yeah, he's he's, he's definitely like he's definitely where you where grown ups are, they he like command more than any other rapper on the planet. Like everybody's mama's mama love him. Like all the old people, all the babies, everything love him. I've never seen charisma like that. I've always admired that and wanted to take that from him. But what he gave me was enough. But I always admired how he commanded everything, no matter what rapper was around, what actor was around. He was old. They always wanted to be around him. Yeah, he, he definitely was the type of dude that had ultra love in New York and everywhere. Yeah, I loved him. I always loved him because he gave us that swag. He gave, there was no fat nigga running around that beautiful and that charismatic. You know what I mean? That sharp with his clothes. He always told me, listen, man, I got a hundred thousand dollar wardrobe. I keep it going every minute of the day. And he always told me, yo, lay off the, of that, a lot of that jewelry. When you do videos and you be around, lay off a lot of that shit. He said, like, why? He said, like, because when, when you don't wear it, it look like you broke. Mm. So, you know what I mean? Try to, like, you know, minimize that shit so you can move around. The niggas don't got to predicate your dollar amount off of your jewelry game. Mm. You know what I mean? So I always remember that and I always laid off of anything other than a watch or a little chain you could tuck in, something dainty. And I ain't really into that. You know what I mean? Something real light that I go with, but nothing heavy. Nothing with the Jesus pieces hanging to the belly and, you know, the cables and all of that. I never been into it anyway, but he always made me, you know what I mean? He always was teaching me little shit like, yo, you ain't into this shit. Getting your nails and your feet done. You ain't into this shit yet. And I always remember that. I gotta get into this shit. So as a young nigga, I'm gonna get some money. I'm gonna get into this shit. Your facials and all that. Get, get my feet done and 
keep my shit up. So he taught me that. Niggas wasn't teaching me nothing like that. And he taught me how to dress, got me around the ladies that taught me how to dress, go to LA. I came to LA with a motherfucking Nordica sweats, Timberlands, and a Yankee jacket with a Yankee mm-hmm. cap, like every other nigga do. When he go to LA, like, came like that. And then you leave in Versace. Way before niggas had it. I ain't know what it was. Mm. I just love the serpent on it, like the, the 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 serpent head, the Medusa head on it. On your shoes, and they looked it was closer to Bally's I saw it than any other shoe. That's why I like Versace. But we had fun though, man. It was it was fun. It was it was fun and it was dark. It had dark moments. You know what I'm saying? Coming from a town. Like like New Rochelle starting off and then coming to Mount Vernon and had the best of both worlds. It was crazy. Niggas got in trouble. Niggas got by. Niggas niggas got their lives together. Niggas went different ways, different states. Niggas told on each other, did all types of shit to each other. You know what I mean? We got past all of that to be where we at today, man, because it was crazy back then. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. That that strip, Third Street, was addictive. Mount Vernon, Third Street, was addictive. South Side was addictive. Hey, yo, Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man, Brownsville, Brooklyn, Dykeman, 200 block. You already know. Shout out my bro, Dondre, the boss in the whole Mount Vernon. You heard? We went from prison cells to living well. All my still in jail, give them hell.